Hello and welcome to EELE 101. This is week five of the C programming part of 101. And this week we are going to ask the question, how can we package our code so, th so that we can reuse it easily? And the answer to this question is the use of functions. All right, so let's look at how a function uh, looks like in, in C. And for this example, we'll use uh, a quadratic equation. So we're wanting to compute the y value of this quadratic. And so here, the function we're going to compute is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay. And we're going to call the function that computes this f poly 2. Okay. And so notice this how we create the function here is we give it the name. Here it's f poly 2. Now this function is going to return something. So we have to tell it the type that it will return. And in this case, it's going to be a double precision floating point or a double type. And it's going to take some arguments that we are going to pass to it. So notice that we have the variable x in here. So we're going to pass a double precision value of x, or a double type. So here's x. We put a comma there, because we're going to pass the coefficients to this quadratic. So we are going to pass the variable a, which is going to be a type double the variable b, which is type double, and the variable c. And notice all of these are inside the parentheses. Okay. Now, <clears throat> notice here is the curly braces. That's going to include all the statements that are going to be part of the function. <clears throat> now, inside we can have local variables. And in this case, we're going to have a variable called y. And here we're going to compute the quadratic. So here we have a times x times x, which is the ax squared part. We're going to add b times x and then add c. And we're going to store this in a local variable called y. And then when we're done, we're going to return that variable. So we're using the return keyword. And it's going to be returned as a double. So this is how functions operate. Another way of looking at this is you can see on this side, these are all the inputs that we're passing to the function. It does something internally, and then it creates an output that we use. <clears throat> OK, so an example of how we would use this is here's a statement where y equals f poly 2. We're going to pass 5, comma 2, comma 4, comma 3.5. And now notice here, you have to remember the order that you are passing the variables in. So notice here, the first variable is x. OK, so we're passing 5 as the value of x. Notice the second variable that we're passing, <clears throat> and the second argument is a. OK, the third argument is b. And the fourth argument is C. Okay, so we have to get the order right. And so the function here will compute a x squared plus b times x plus c. Well, that's a. Well, we passed in two for a. We passed in five for x. So we're going to square five plus four because we passed in b as four. Well, x is five. And then we passed in 3.5 SC. So the result of that is 73.5. And when we call the function with these arguments, it's going to return and place into Y here 73.5. Okay, so if we look at the uh, function from last week, okay, here we had a third order polynomial. Okay, and what we're going to look at here is Let's take this computation part here and create our own function for this. Okay, and we're going to call the function p3. So, how do we stick this into our code? All right, well, first we have to create the function. So, remember the function has to return something. So, in this case, it's going to be a double. 
And here we're going to pass an argument. In this case, it's just going to be x. The name is P3. Here we have the parentheses. And then we have the curly braces that is showing us the body of the function. We're going to have an internal variable called y. And here is where we're going to do the actual computation. Now notice we're just hard coding the values of 6 and 4 here. Okay, so this is a very specific function, uh, not to general purpose. And then once we computed that, we're going to return that value y. And that's going to read the function will return whatever y is at that point. So this is how we're going to use it. Well, we, all we have to say here is once, once we've created this function, y equals p3, and we're just passing x as the argument. So let's just plug that in. Okay. Now notice we have to tell our, uh, <clears throat> you know, our, our code here, we have to tell it that um, function p3. So notice we're going to place that, this code outside of the main. So don't stick it inside here, okay? It's either going to be above here or down below main, okay? So we're just going to put it before our main function for right now. But it has to be outside the main function, okay? Now, notice we're just going to replace our statement here where we were doing all this computation before with this function call. Okay, and we're just using the function p3. So every time we place an x here, we're calling this function, and it's going to do this calculation for us. <clears throat> okay, so last time we also looked for the min and max of this third order polynomial. Okay, so here's the code from last time. And we're going to rewrite this code so the function will return the index of the maximum value in the array. Okay, now no, notice the function can only return one thing. So if we return the maximum value, um, we could do that, but we also want to know what the x value was at that location. So it works better if we return the index in the array where the maximum value in the y array occurs. Okay, so let's rewrite our code to do that. All right, so this is what it's going to look like. <clears throat> Notice that this function now returns a type int because our index is an integer type. We're going to call this max location because we're returning the index of where the maximum value occurred. And now notice here, we're not passing a single variable x. We're wanting to pass the entire array or where this array is located in memory. So now notice we're going to make use of these square brackets. And what this is telling it is go find the array x. And if we don't put anything in the square brackets, it's telling the compiler that x is an array and go to that location in memory. <coughs> We're going to do the same thing with y. And with the function also needs to know how big the arrays are, so we need to um, pass in the total number of elements in the arrays. <clears throat> okay. All right, so notice this here is identical code to what we had before. Okay. And when we go through the array, here's n. Okay, so we're going to go through all the all the elements. Okay, here we're checking to see if x is in the domain that we're interested in, which is between minus 1 and 5. And then we're going to store the maximum value and where that index occurred. Now notice we're just using this to you know, do a check again, but ultimately what we're interested in is this index that is telling us where the maximum location has occurred. So now when this has gone through uh, the entire, um, walk through all the elements in the entire array, okay, and we're done, okay, then we're going to return this integer value, which is the location of the maximum value. Okay, again, um, we are specifying a certain region where we're checking. 
and this is the code where we would actually call the function. Okay, so notice here we're going to actually pass in the array names, okay, and the number of points. And when that function's finished, it's going to return us, return to us, the index of where the maximum value occurred. Okay, so let's plug this into our code. Okay, well the way we would use this um, <clears throat> would be here's the index. We're going to have it find that index where the maximum value is located. All right. Okay. Well, if we know where that's located, then we can actually look up our array to find the y maximum value at that location and the associated x value where y is maximum. Okay. We can also create a similar function that we look for the minimum value as well and this way we could find y min, x min and now notice in our code with using these functions that this is much more readable than if we had a lot of this in the code okay and then we're just printing out the, the min and max values okay now this code example will be on the D2L website for you to look at <clears throat> okay so last time you were computing the maximum power Okay, and we're looking across the array to find where the maximum value occurred. Okay, so now what we're going to do is uh, create a function called pload that's going to compute this for us. So essentially what we're going to do is in, in create a function to do this computation here. So this is pload, okay, and what do we need to pass to it? Well, we need the variable v source, we need the variable r source, okay, and we need the variable c, okay. So there's three things that need to get passed, okay. And <clears throat> then once it's passed, it's going to calculate the load, um, the power across the load um, for those three values and we can put that in our array for well, just like we were doing last time. Okay, so <clears throat> now you have to do something similar. Okay, so take the program you did last time uh, and you're going to rewrite it. Okay, and you're just going to replace some of the code with functions. <clears throat> okay, so the, so the code, the program is going to do exactly the same thing as last time. Okay, the only difference is you have to create a function called pload that calculates the power across the load for each value of the variable c. Okay, and this is how you would call the function. Right, so now you need to create that function, and <clears throat> you also have to create a max location function to find where the maximum power occurs in that array. Okay, now there's a bit of difference here, is because you're gonna since you're gonna search the entire array. Okay, you don't need to check the X array here, right? Or the C array. Just go through the entire array, find where the maximum value occurs. So you don't have to check the domain. So do, we don't even have to pass um, that variable, okay? Or that array. <clears throat> okay, so this is how your max function is going to look. You're only going to pass in the power array, or PA, the, and how many points are in that power array. Okay, and then you will print out the maximum power information just like you did with the previous program. So good luck in your coding assignment.